Hello, this is my Unray Mac Pro and on the most part I am very happy with it. I've been testing it for just over a month and a half to understand its limitations and it does have a few, enough to be influenced on how I have deployed my Unray Net. Now in this video I'm going to show you five performance improvements that will improve the file transfer speed and responsiveness of Samba protocol when used between a Mac Pro and an Unraid NAS. You see in my first video using my Unraid Mac Pro, which incidentally I bought for £99 on eBay, absolute bargain, very very happy with it. In that appraisal of my experience using Unraid with my Macs, I said the following. Unusability of Samba and FTP. If Samba was fast and reliable, it would transform this whole experience completely into something that would be absolutely brilliant if you just open up a folder, scroll down a directory, copy that project, go. But unfortunately, it's not that. Now, the rest of the clip talks about the good and the bad points I found along the way using Unraid in my video editing environment. In that environment, I'm using a Drovo DAS as my first tier storage system connected to my Mac Pro 2019. I have a second NAS storage system, which is my trusty Mac Pro 2009 running Mac OS Mojave. That second tier Mac Pro NAS acts as a duplicate to back up the Drovo. Now, I won't bore you with why I like a Drovo, but let's just say they're an endangered species. And now I need to find an alternative first tier storage system. And this is part of that journey. To give you some context of what I do, I create videos generally about mountain biking and mountain bike trails in Scotland. I use several GoPros, a 360 degree camera, as well as an iPhone, which generates hundreds of gigabytes of files in a Final Cut Pro project. Now, after that project is finished and uploaded to YouTube, I back up that project to Drogo, which is connected to my Mac Pro 2019, very speedy. And after that, I get my Mac Pro 2009 NAS to copy the contents of the Drobo to itself for a secondary backup. The Unraid Mac Pro was meant to be the first tier high speed Drobo replacement. However, it got relegated straight to cold storage, third tier. Did not pass go, it did not collect 200 pounds. My expectations of the Unraid system were high, even with its limitations of what I needed it to do before I started. However, in creating that test Unraid configuration and playing with it for a couple of weeks, I did find some flaws with Unraid when using with a Mac. Now, one of those flaws, and the major reason for relegating it to third tier storage was how Samba did not perform well, not having the ability to quickly browse directories, files, drag and drop, as you would on a Mac locally, was a real disappointment. And it is not one of the disadvantages I knew about in advance of purchasing Unraid. It's one of those things I found underneath the carpet. Now, I must say, this is not entirely Unraid's fault. It's about 70-30 the Mac's fault. You see, the Mac has the same Samba issues, whether it's talking to Windows or other NAS platforms like your Synology or your QNAP. From my research, it seems that Samba on the Unraid and the Mac are variants of the same common ancestor. Now, over time, they have drifted apart, so now they are not the best at communicating with each other out of the box. And this is what I encountered with my first endeavours with Unraid. It's like they're speaking different dialects of the same language. They can talk to each other, but it takes a lot of overhead and misunderstanding, which seems to make the whole transfer business and browsing not very efficient. Now, the five tweaks I'm going to show you will make that communication align better with each other and speed things up a lot. Both Unraid and Mac Samba settings need to be changed slightly to make them talk to each other more efficiently. It's like they're bad cousins and you just need to bang their heads together to make them talk sense. However, even with these changes, while the overall average speed and responsiveness or, and transfer speeds are better now, Finder is less likely to become unresponsive to your inputs and lock up on you till it sorts itself out and that you get back to what you were trying to do, which was simply move the Final Cut Pro project from point A to point B, it's still not as good as using rsync for file transfers. rsync still trumps Samba by miles. Actually, I take that back a little bit. The Samba T5 SSD, when used to move data between the two boxes, still trumps everything if you're prepared to get up and walk across the room, which actually might not be a bad thing 
it only keeps my Apple Watch to stop nagging me to stand up and breathe every hour. So without any further ado, here are the five tweaks and settings to get those Samba cousins to cooperate better with each other. Okay, first off, number one, we're going to change the Mac Finder defaults. Now these settings control how Finder searches and from that, what information it shows you. When Finder opens a folder, it needs to scan and do work behind the scenes in real time to create and show you the things that you want to see. Finder scans all the files, looks at all their types and any metadata along the way. And all these little bits of information that the cousins need to communicate between each other over a network. By adjusting Finder's display settings, you can tell Finder to do less work and so talk less with its cousin. This is the same way it's on a local drive folder or a folder on NAS. The only thing is, there's a slow network in between the two. So let's open a folder that is mounted on the Mac via Samba to the Unraid NAS. When you get to the folder that you want, hit Command plus J to bring up the Finder's View information settings for that folder. At the bottom you will see Calculate All Sizes and Show Icon Preview. If either of these are checked, then uncheck them. And then to confirm these settings, just hit the use as defaults button. Those changes will now be applied to that folder going forward. You now have told the Mac to do less work when scanning folders. That leads nicely on to tweak number two, and that is connected with the previous tweak. Have you ever visited a folder to be met with the processing and little spinning wheel? This is because the folder has so much information in it, it takes Finder a long time to process it before it can show it to you. If there is too much information to gather over a slow drive connected to a slow network, it can lock Finder out from your inputs until it finishes, which is really kind of annoying. In fact, I found this to get really bad sometimes to the point that the actual desktop itself comes unresponsive. Now, to stop this from happening, it's a good idea to get into the habit of creating folders on your NAS with only a few files in, and so this means less information to gather, process and display, so resulting in a faster Finder. Next up is tweak number three, Unraid Samba multi-channel setting. This is where we start making changes to Samba itself on either the Unraid system or the Mac. These settings help the Samba cousins, the Mac and Unraid, talk to each other more efficiently and so move files across the network quicker. So in the Unraid settings panel here, open up the Samba settings and look for the setting Enable Samba multi-channel. If this is not indicated as yes, change it to become yes. Tweak number four, remains on this page and we're looking for the Samba Mac interoperability setting. This setting is normally set to no, but because obviously we're talking between an Unraid system and a Mac, this intuitively needs to be set to a yes. So set that to a yes. However, these settings need to be paired up with a similar tweaks on the Mac side of things before they can work. So that leads us onto the Mac. And that leads us now nicely on to tweak number five, the final tweak. And here we fiddle with the Mac OS Samba config file. Making changes to the Samba settings here will align the changes we've made earlier on the Unraid system. And it's the final piece of the puzzle to improve the responsiveness for Finder and those transfer speeds between the Mac and the Unraid system. To make the changes on the Mac, you have to get your hands a little bit dirty as we have to dive into the inner workings of the Mac by opening up a terminal window. So we're gonna do that next. Open a terminal window and go to the directory slash etc. And we're gonna look for the file samba.conf. You can do this by typing in the command cd etc at the command prompt. When in that directory, type the command ls to list the contents of that folder. If the samba.conf file is not present, don't worry, we can create it now. In your favorite file text editor, in my case I'm using Visual Studio Code, I've created the file samba.conf and you can see it here. And as you can see, it has the following samba settings. There are more, but these are the ones we need in order to talk to the Unraid system more efficiently. Some of these settings now align with those same settings we made earlier on the Unraid server. The first line, Samba setting, signing is required. Here it's set to match the Unraid setting, so turning off client signing. The second line, Apple off, is set to true to ensure Apple specific metadata is copied along with any files when across, copied across the NAS. The third line, max response timeout, sets the maximum time to wait for any response from the server, quite handy. The fourth line, MC prefer, wired, sets any network communications to prefer wired NIC connections over wireless. So we need to set that to bias it, or at least I do, because I'm primarily using a network cable. The fifth line, MC on, is a really important one here, 
turns on the multi-channel mode instead of allowing more than one communication channel per session. And this really speeds things up. Once saved, it's best to restart the Mac so these settings kick in when you go to next remount the share drive on your, from your Unraid NAS. These settings for me have made Finder browsing on my Unraid NAS a much smoother experience and now practical. It's still not fantastic, it's still slow, but I'm hoping when I buy new drives in the future, there will be some future improvements, but I'll have to wait and see. I don't think it's down to the SATA 2 hardware in the Mac Pro. I don't think the hindrance is there. I, like most other people, invested in Unraid. I'm looking forward to the day when Unraid developers, Lime Technology, enable SSD trim handling for those SSD drives. This would make the Unraid system very viable Drobo replacement. But okay, we're back to using hard drives for the moment. Even with these five improvements, there's still no match on the file transfer speeds when compared to using rsync, especially when copying Final Cut Pro projects to and from the NAS. For example, I have here a screen recording, which is sped up, but it shows the point. I have set off a file copy by drag dropping a Final Cut Pro project across to the Unraid NAS. In the meantime, while that is happening, I've opened up a terminal window. I've manually typed in the rsync command to copy the same project to the same NAS. Entered my password and off it goes. Nair is finished before the drag and drop has even got close to finishing itself. In fact, if I set off a second rsync command and copy that same Final Cut Pro project back to the Mac from the Unraid system, it can still finish before that first drag and drop has even finished itself. And that just goes to show, drag and drop is a bit flaky, slow, and rsync is absolute winner. So I'll still be using rsync to make backups of my Final Cut Pro projects, but at least Finder browsing is fairly quick and painless now, given the settings I've shown you. Since making those Samba changes, I've also noticed a notable improvement in the rsync transfer speeds too. I'm not sure how Samba has influenced the rsync, but the file transfer speeds to and from the Unraid NAS, on average, appear to be matching now what I do get with my Mac Pro 2009 NAS. Now this is what I expected in the first place, but as you saw in my first video on my Unraid NAS, I was very disappointed when first setting it up. But have these changes changed my mind about relegating Unraid Mac Pro to the third tier cold storage solution? Uh, no. While it has made it certainly better, the Unraid experience better, it's still not a first tier solution in my workflow. I still need to decide on the hardware that I would like to use connected to my Mac Pro 2019 instead. And one thing I will say, in my learnings of this samba.conf file and the various settings that can be made, it does seem that these settings have always been needed to be tweaked as new Mac OSs have come out over the years. It seems Apple inadvertently keep breaking Samba when it comes to non-Apple devices. And so the moral of the story here, from what I can perceive, is if Samba goes off the tracks in future updates, you may have to start tweaking those settings again to get, bring it all back together again. Let me know down in the comments what you have done to improve the efficiency of using your Unraid NAS with Macs. And of course, I thank you for getting this far in the video. And to show you you did find it useful, please tell YouTube that you liked it by hitting that like button. This, this helps the channel out a lot. And so not to miss future videos on my Unraid journey, and it will be a journey to make it the best it can be on my Mac Pro, then do switch on notifications too. Until next time, keep safe, keep well, 